Uh, how do I start this? How do I start this? Should I come in like? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? That's how it's starting. That's how it's starting. You just did it. You broke the. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to episode two. My guest today is David Montoya. Uh, my man is based out of Los Angeles, California. He's a DJ producer, uh, tours all over the world doing DJing and has had some top 10 uh, chart hits on websites like TrackSource. Um, let's get right into it. David Montoya on DCM TV. Let's go. Uh, how do I start this? How do I start this? Should I come in like... <laughs> okay you know what that's how it's starting that's how it's starting you just did it you broke the <laughs> so welcome to dcm tv i'm super super stoked to have you here man um i've been uh a fan for a long time and uh, i even went back to my computer um on my old laptop and and I've got songs on there that you did um, on, I believe it was Nulu Records, and okay. just really cool, like um, like more on the the very um, like Afro Afro house, but more at the core of Afro house, like very African influenced house, and that stuff. Like I've 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 been spinning that since forever, and it's never it's never disappointed the dance floor. Um, I may have interpreted this wrong, but I've seen you kind of go through waves of like producing a lot and then you take breaks and then you produce a lot and you take breaks. And I find that interesting because you're one of the few people who will do something like that and never say, I'm quitting music. I'm done with this. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> because because I in from what I'm seeing just from your 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 workflow is is that it seems to be this uh, kind of like, I'm inspired right now. I'm ready to start, you know, showing everybody my emotions and experiences in the last little while that I've been able to collect and sum up. And now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, share it. And then it feels like maybe you hit a point where you are kind of like, okay, I've given you as much as I feel that I can give you right now, it's time to go back and, and live life and, and come back to this. Can we start with your background, musical influence? Where where did you first decide to become a DJ and a producer? Uh, where those influences came from um, and how? Wow. All right, as you can see, there's a lot of gray hair up in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go way, way back. <laughs> So like in the 80s, I was a b-boy, I was breakdancing, okay. and I was very influenced with that whole thing, that whole scene, okay. you know, graffiti. I used to be a graffiti artist. Oh, cool. Uh, Me too. And and then I used to see these DJs, you know, play the music while everybody was breakdancing. And uh, people like Jam Master J, Grandmaster oh, nice. Flash, stuff like that, you know, cool. I used to see them. And I was like, yo, I want to do that. And... Um, in those days, I didn't have the money. Of course, I was super young, and my parents mm -hmm. didn't have the money either. So I had a great creative, you know? So I would get, yeah. like, I don't know, like three tape recorders, oh, separate cool. tape, uh, tape recorders, and I would sync up every cassette. I had one tape recorder that was – it was a boom box, but it had a, a, a button that you push, and this yeah. record player would pop out. Ooh, so that's what okay. I would use to like fucking scratch on. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. So I would hit record on one of the 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 the, the recorders, the the tape recorders, and I would just try and mix everything in the best that I can, you know. Mm -hmm. And and from there on, I was just like, man, one day I might have you know a pair of decks, and then I'll play some yeah. real music on real equipment. And uh, nice. so yeah, I mean through. Then all the way to like 91 until I got into college, I finally had money. I, right. I bought my first deck and yeah. Uh, but Technics the, right away? Yeah, straight yeah. in. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And a rotary mixer and okay. uh oh, row. And nice. um, yeah, I, I suddenly came up with some money, <laughs> you know. Right. But um, you know, I was collecting music throughout all those years, even though I didn't have equipment. 
So I was buying, you know, anything from like hip hop to freestyle, high energy. I don't know if you know that kind of yeah. era, the yeah. DVD, that yeah. kind of disco-ish, a lot of Latin influence mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Lee, Didn't Louis Vega, Louis Vega kind of cracked that open, didn't he? Or yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I didn't know about Louis Vega okay. in those days. Okay. Um, I was just, it was just part of the scene here in LA. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. There was a radio station here in LA called KDAY. And mm -hmm. there was, I think, a two hour session where they would play high energy music. So I would be mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, right on. And a lot of my friends were into it. So I was like, yo, I, I want to buy some of those records. So I started collecting some of that. Cool. And um, so then came the whole rave scene. Okay. In, in what late, year? Late, okay, 80s, late 80s. Yeah. 89, 90. Okay. I was still in high school. You know, yeah. But I was trying to sneak out and, and yeah. go to all these underground parties. And um yeah, I think the first party that I went to, it just fucking That's it. it. it fucking, yeah, that was it. It took over me and I was like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> this is it. I'm in your fucking chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, the the environment, you know, the mm -hmm. people and everything. And I was the just, dancing and yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. And um that just fucking got me into cracked it wide open you know, electronic music. And mm -hmm. I was already listening to like craft work and all that stuff, but okay. this was a whole new era, you know, and right. techno and stuff like that house. So yeah, I started buying those records and, cool. and I think by like the mid nineties, I started playing, you know, parties here and there. And uh, I would get invited to play at clubs. Um, I wasn't playing like fucking every weekend, you know, but I was playing like maybe, three or four times a year and for okay. me that was like, hell yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, so nice. gradually i started like getting more and more gigs and then um and then it got to a point where the i wasn't feeling some of the music mm -hmm. and i'm like yo maybe i should start my own music you know production okay. and, yeah um, i want to say like 2006 is when I bought my first uh, studio setup and cool I think um, everything I didn't I didn't go to school for it I just okay. everything was taught yeah YouTube yeah a lot of reading okay. and uh, YouTube back in 2006 even yeah 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 no yeah, kidding dude. yeah because I, I I was still at that time I was like calling like uh, private lessons on like I'd have a list of questions on Pro Tools, and oh, then shit. it'd just be like, yeah. And I, this guy came over. We eventually, you know, became friends. But it, it like I was still telling people like, yeah, YouTube wasn't around. But I guess for you it was. I I feel like now it's so much different because you just have a question about how to do something, and then you you go there. But yeah, at that time I was like calling a dude, bringing him and paying for an hour to show me how to do a list. Anyway, sorry. So yeah. So YouTube, 2006. The forums. Remember, people used to hit up the right, forums, or right? Like Which was so um, hard to understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <For> me, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think the following year, 2007, I had my first release. Okay. And cool. Got the tail yeah. end of like, um, a re releases getting, um, you know, uh, coming out on record on vinyl and. Mm -hmm. You know, I was lucky enough to have like two records with my name on it, you know, and I was just nice. like, hell yeah, right on, cool. But then yeah. everything became digital. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the whole Afro thing, I was always into like Afro, um, like, you know, Latin music, the percussion yeah. stuff. And my mom used to play like all the cumbias while she was doing, you know, right. putting on the vacuum cleaner, washing dishes, and yeah. I'm in the background. And at that time, I wasn't really... When I was young, I wasn't really paying attention too much, but it, it, it somehow it stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And and now that I'm older, I'm like, yo, fuck, that's just bomb, bro. Right. You know, those rhythms and mm -hmm. and and the whole um a lot of the African music that I was collecting, it was part of you know the rave scene also, because people were sampling stuff like that, and I, I would collect some of those records and I was so into it, you know? So mm -hmm. when I started making music, I tried to like incorporate that in. stuff, you know? And I was also listening to Soulful House, don't get me wrong. I love that right, stuff too. Right. 
and um but the afro stuff is what really really got to me and i was just like and it came natural obviously because you have uh an extensive like background of listening to that stuff for even a period of time where you didn't realize that that would be a major influence in your music right so um so 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 go drawing on that whole thing and then just teaching yourself which already takes a lot of motivation obviously to um to get yourself to learn a program which can be like uh super frustrating <laughs> did you see kind of a new direction that upper house was going in before you bef- uh while you were going in that direction did you see that it was going there or were you just doing david montoya and uh and then that just kind of happened naturally i think it just happened naturally okay you know? I didn't know it was going to go on in the future. And here in LA, I, you know, I was playing a lot of clubs, um, but was, LA was more of a soulful. Yeah. Um, West you know? Coast. Yeah. Yeah. They're very soulful, very funky, very deep house. Yeah. And, you know, I love a lot of the soulful stuff. Don't get me wrong, you know? Yeah. And I was playing it and I was stuff that I was feeling, you know? But there were there would be times when I would try and slip in some Afro stuff, and people mm-hmm. would kind of like, <laughs> "What is going on? Or, yeah, what's happening? Right. It's too much African music, okay, you know, okay. um, a little too ethnic." Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. after a while, I just I I didn't want to play anymore. I because I wasn't okay. feeling I don't know comfortable. Yeah. Um, I wasn't playing what I wanted to play. Yeah. So, you know, this might be the riskiest thing, uh, 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 you know, straight straight up like suicide, you know, but I said, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to take any more gigs in LA. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I, I don't want to, I don't want to play. And, you know, I think that if people are making this music, it, it's, being played in those areas and I want to go to those areas and, and okay. play there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know where LA was going to go or if they were ever going to accept Afro. So I, right. I was, just, I wanted to do my thing and yeah. that was it, you know? And so you started reaching out further beyond where you were at to try and, and, and get that sound. Right. Uh, and, and when I had that. a winter music conference and there was some okay. heads up. Yeah. Okay. And I would network. That was the biggest thing, networking and and reaching out to people in New York and you know okay. Boston and stuff like that. Right, right. And um, you know they were more accepting to it, and and I would get booked more there. Okay. Okay. But um, LA, I was just like, you know, and this is my home. I love my home. You know. Totally. Totally. But at that moment, um, it it was just not. It's it's a different vibe. It's very smooth. Like when I think of like West Coast, San Fran, LA, I'm thinking of like Alm Lounge, and yeah. uh, you know, like um, I'm I'm talking about more of the successful West Coast stuff, uh, like Mark Farina and 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 Carter. Um, yeah, yeah. So so yeah. So that that that's yeah. It's it's obviously even though it's an underground scene, it's still like kind of like you fit it or you start to come at a different angle, and it's much harder to to yeah. get in from that side. The stuff where I started to like it's gonna get creepy because it's like stuff I know about you before I even met you. <laughs> but when you got <laughs> when you got on Tribe Records, uh-huh. um, it felt like especially when you and Jose were kind of doing your thing at that time on Tribe, it felt like a defining moment in the, for me, it felt like a defining moment in Afro Latin uh, influenced house music. And yeah. you guys were, cause it was getting more raw and, and you, you were, I felt like you were onto something starting like in that time, especially you're onto something very unique. Um, did you feel that when you were making those tracks at that time? Or was that just kind of like, yeah, I just pumped out another track. Here you go. Kind of <laughs> deal, like. You know what, to be honest, I, I didn't, it, it was just something that just came out naturally. I okay. wasn't really thinking so hard about it. Okay. Um, 
Jose and I were, were good friends and he was doing a party out of here oh, and cool. I loved what he was doing and totally supported that. Yeah. Um, actually played for his club a couple of times. Okay. Um, and he was doing some great stuff too. Yeah. Big, big bangers. Everybody all over the world was doing it. Right. Um, I was doing my thing, but I wasn't trying to copy him. Yeah. But you were influenced by it because you were around each other and, and doing yeah, yeah, things yeah. together. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he grew up doing, you know, his listening to certain sounds. I grew up listening to certain sounds. And I don't know. I guess we were both influenced by those sounds. And okay. We, we did the Afro Latin thing, you know? And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Did I, Tribe know what you guys were doing? Or were you kind of just going, yo, we got some tracks, check it out and, you know, put it out if you want to kind of deal? Well, Jose was putting out more stuff on Tribe before I yeah, did. Yeah. Um, I didn't come along until I did the song. I, I want to say, is it Afro Latina? Yeah, Afro Latina. Mm. Okay, so moving into that, you get to a point where I felt like I started hearing the sound becoming very um, dark and techno-ish with the sounds of, of, of um, Afro-Latin rhythms and African rhythms. Um, was that a conscious decision that you made at that point? You're like, yo, I, I got to start going this direction or, or again, it's just kind of like where your flow was at. I think it's because part of my influences, uh, like I said, I was a break dancer. So yeah. I, I was hearing a lot of people doing, using drum machines. They were using synthesizers. I used to listen to like new wave music also. Okay. So you would hear like Depeche Mode and Pet Shop Boys and all that stuff even more. Gotcha. I love synthesizers, you know, yeah. so it, it only came, you know, natural for me to like incorporate the organic okay. stuff with electronic okay and uh yeah i would i would do that and i i didn't think much of it it was just like one of those things let me just make it you know and mm -hmm. see what, mm -hmm. what happens you know and people i guess it, went berserk. Like it, you know yeah you know? and, and now it is it's yeah. just like it's even it's darker better. that's right it's almost borderline progressive house yeah. which i'm never really into yeah. I did touch like a little bit of trance at a certain mm -hmm. time. Yeah. But kind of left it alone because it got too cheesy. And yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I've I've always liked synthesizers, and I guess that's why I've kind of gone a little bit darker. Okay. And I want to make even more darker stuff, experimental okay. stuff. Yeah. I just haven't finished it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Working on it. <laughs> Am I uh, wrong or right in saying that you go through like waves of creative of creativity? Like you'll finish a body of work and then you take a break for a while. Am I wrong about that? Or is it just the way the stuff's coming out? Um, it's been not really it, it the way yeah. it's been happening for me. It's okay. There's two things. Yeah technical difficulties my computer's <laughs> crashing you know and right. and i don't have like funds to like go out the next day and you know replace Recover. that shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it took me a little bit a while to you know come back gotcha you know when you update stuff you you have to put in like all new software totally. and it's like oh dude it's not yeah. compatible and blah yeah, blah blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I remember like the first time my computer crashed, I had to get a whole new system mm. and all new program. So I had to learn new DAW software because I was using Cubase before okay. and now I'm using Logic. So it's just like mm. starting all over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was a, a, a long break that I took there. Okay. When I got it, I started making stuff again. Okay. Um, and it happened a couple of times okay. after that. Okay. Um, now the other thing is that I don't like putting many songs out there. Okay. Um, like others, I know others that are doing it, and yeah. and you know it's super cool. And sometimes they pump out really good music. Yeah. But I feel like if you make less uh, if you put out less music people that will enjoy it more i see and will remember it hopefully right. that they'll, they'll play it more yeah 
you know. Right, and, right, right, right. Just let it sit, sit for a while and marinate. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. And and when they start hearing that, oh shit, he's gonna come out with a new track, and the anticipation that okay. you know the they okay. all that, everybody will get you know on that you know yeah right we did it out let's go quick let's go get it okay i don't know it gives me that feeling like you know when you used to buy records you know okay. and yeah yeah um, it's not like you would the anticipation it. of it and and getting yeah. excited about it and like okay cool and just letting the song breathe you know giving yeah. it you know because yeah. a lot of people nowadays like i said there's so much music coming out so much every week yeah that sometimes a song will just be played for that week and then mm -hmm. you know it, it moves on and it you know the next song yeah, the next one comes in and yeah and it's it's yeah. it's kind of sad it's cool that there's great there's good music coming out yeah but i uh, i also like for myself in my opinion mm -hmm. i like mm -hmm. putting tracks out Little by little, not every fucking. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I have such a dysfunctional relationship with the digital <laughs> vinyl world because I'm always like, I remember, like uh, when I was younger, all I spent my money on was like cassettes, CDs, and records. Oh, me too. And you know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah, I can see like right there already. Wow. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> so the thing is, is that. Like nothing frustrated me more than going to the store and they were like, yeah, we're all out. You're going to have to wait like three weeks till we get more. And you're like three weeks, man. feels like eternity <laughs> to get them something you, the album you really want. Right. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, you're always like, man, I swear, like, you know, like if they should change the way they do things and now you can get the song as soon as you Shazam it, you're like sweet and you buy it. And now I'm like, I'm like, this is way too easy. <laughs> and I don't think I like that either. I'm just like a constant uh, contradiction of myself, you know, when it comes to like accessibility to music. But but I, I get it, man. You know, and and I, I wonder maybe that's a that comes with maturity, too, because a long time ago, I used to be about uh, being prolific. And then as time goes on now, I'm, I'm starting to understand it your way quite a bit more where it's like, you know, maybe you should just let things sit for a bit. And I have an issue, like I would put out two or three in like a month and a half. Now I'm kind of like, no, 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 let's spread these out, you know, every, at least every couple of months, which still is, you know, can be maybe too soon. Do you have any like personal um, um, techniques as far as staying inspired is concerned? Or have you always just had a, a like a switch that you could turn on and be like, all right, I'm going to start creating and just start doing it. <laughs> no, I do have times where I, I just, I don't have anything to give. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's times where I'm like, Oh shit, I got to do this. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Save. I got, I have another idea. Let me okay. pop this out. Um, it's, it's always changing for me. Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay. Sometimes it could take me a day to finish one song Another okay. time, it could take me up to two months to finish one song. Right. Uh, so it's always changing with me, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I think, um, it's, it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I know people that that can do stuff like every single day. They got something new coming out, and I don't know if they don't have anything else to do at home. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But I also, I, I have things to do. I want to go mm -hmm. hang out with my friends. I, yeah, yeah. I want to go, I don't know, go hiking. and I don't know. Yeah. And I think maybe that's also inspiration for me when I'm done there. 100%. Can, like, yo, I'm ready. I got energy. Let me, yeah. let me do some stuff. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I got it. So you're drawing inspiration from all aspects of your life outside yeah. of music as well, right? So it's a reflection of your life, I guess. So what are you what are you working on right now? I actually have two things. Um, okay. I'm doing something for um, who was it again? Uh, <laughs> um, <geez. laughs> I blanked that. Busy now. man, busy man. I have like two two projects that I'm working on right now. Oh, one for Fomp Records, which okay. is uh, 
out of London. Um, uh, Pablo Mendes, yeah, and, Pablo uh, and Joseph. Um, really cool guys, you know. And yeah, great guys. Awesome label. Yeah, love that label. Really, really cool stuff. Um, cool. So yeah, I'm working on that, and then I'm also working on some original stuff that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and nice. I just for some reason I just wasn't doing it. Maybe because mm -hmm. I was busy doing remixes. Okay. Um, but I've always wanted to do like my own stuff and, cool. and experiment with like different sounds. I'm, okay. Um, I, not only like Afro, I want to do stuff like um, cumbia. Okay. I want to do some, um, I don't know, some, I don't know, some experimental, some Caternata kind of stuff, you know? Oh, okay, okay. I don't know. I just want to. electronic -y. Different mm -hmm. stuff, you know? Um, so this is an album coming or what do you think? I think it's just, I don't think it's going to be an, an album. Okay. And who knows? I might be under a different name. Oh, okay. Who knows? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, to be continued. So I go on your Spotify, and I don't know if there's like many David Montoyas, <laughs> but I I'm hearing like a variety of music going on here. Yeah. So some of it I'm like, okay, I I could see him going like I'm gonna make some reggaeton or I'm gonna make. But is that all you, or is this just like a a lot of David Montoyas getting I in? Mean it's funny that you bring that up because the other day I was trying to like um, fix that, you know, because okay. there's people that are claiming my tracks. Yeah. Oh. Um, there's people that, you know, yeah, like you said, there's some reggaeton or maybe some yeah. stuff. And then there's like progressive and yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's all over the map, bro. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I just okay. I didn't know, but I was trying to reach out to Spotify to fix all that, but nobody's okay. giving me back, you know, I'm, Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to conclude here. This is DCM TV. Thank you for tuning in with David Montoya uh, and myself. And I will put the links below where you can find them. David, thank you very much for being a part of the show. Thank you. I'm honored. Hey, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and like the videos. Um, if you want to show some more support, you can leave comments uh, in the sections under the video about maybe other topics that I can be talking about with uh, the artists and the interviews. Uh, please follow me on Instagram, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube. Um, I have a playlist on Spotify that has uh, the artists that will be interviewing uh, on this channel as well. Uh, if you're interested in any of my music, uh, it's all available at www.deepculturemusic.com. That's my music label, and I have a lot of great music that I've made uh, myself and my friends. Uh, and please share the video with your social medias and with your friends. Um, maybe suggest to get them to like it as well so we can continue to have this channel grow and do more great interviews. Okay, thanks a lot, and I look forward to seeing you soon.